Thank you, Senya. Thank you um, to the organizers for, uh, for the invitation to this and for uh, organizing this extraordinary conference. Um, I'll be talking about um, two series of works, one with um, Pietro, Fabio Martinelli, and Fabio Tornelli, Pietro Caputo, and Ellen Sly, and the other with Reza Geisari, and Fabio and Reza are here. And um, one part is on the solid on solid model, and that's, um, that sequence of work was trying to get detailed understanding of what we expect to find in the 3D easing model, and the second uh, line of works is trying to confirm these predictions for the easing model. <clears throat> um, so let's start with, uh, with the basic definitions. We've already seen, uh, well, we've, we've seen uh, lots of two-dimensional pictures in the conference so far. Um, this talk will be primarily, well, or I guess exclusively, in, uh, in 3D. I'd like to just point out that unlike all the definitions of the Hamiltonian that we've seen so far, I, my Hamiltonian here is off by a factor of two. Right? And um, so we're summing disagreements as opposed to sigma x, sigma y. And that's more natural if you want to, uh, well, it's natural if you're working with random cluster models, but it's also natural in all, all contexts because it will allow us to directly compare ourselves to the solid on solid model. OK, so let's, let's start with the definition of, uh, of an interface. We've seen this yesterday in in a Lorentz talk, I'm going to define it formally. First, for, for the two-dimensional case, we are, we are interested in, in understanding the boundary between a plus phase and a minus phase at low temperature. The entire talk will be at beta, which is, say, 10. Okay? So finite, above uh, the critical temperature, just above it to allow cluster expansion. Um, so here we are drawing a dual edge between every disagreement in the model, and the interface is going to be the connected component of dual edges that separates the two boundary components. And in two dimensions, the, we've actually seen this in, the, in, the, in, in, in Fabio's talk from this morning, everything is known about this, this converges to a Brownian bridge. And I put here a picture of, of the book by uh, the Bruchin, Roman, and Senia, which is one of the first uh, things that I've uh, read on the easing model. Um, and in particular, the interface is rough. Now, in three dimensions, we do the same thing. We have the Bushin's classical boundary condition. So we have a cylinder, an infinite cylinder, a box of side length n, okay, and stretching up to plus and minus infinity. We put minus on the upper half, play, uh, half space and, and pluses on the lower half. This is supposed to be space, but uh, uh, and then we draw a dual face in between two disagreeing spins. And now the interface actually in 3D, there are multiple ways to, there are, there are some degrees of freedom in how to, to define the interface. We are going to define the interface to be, take, take every face that separates the, the, boundary, uh, to com the boundary components and look at the connected component of such dual faces. So if two faces, are touching by a vertex just in the corner, they are considered connected. So we call this star connected. And now there's a connected component of such dual faces. There's just one, because along the boundary they're all connected. <coughs> and whatever it touches in between. So this is a collection of faces that separates your, your red and blue parts of the space. This is the interface. Okay, it's well defined even so if you even if you color the spins inside deterministically, there'll still be a unique interface like that. Um, okay, and the Bushin's landmark result of 50 years ago was to show that, that this interface is rigid. And here's, uh, here's uh, the, the form, uh, form one, one way to uh, formally state it. Um, starting from some beta naught, if you look at any beta that exceeds this beta naught, and you look at, at this collection of faces, we can, we can, uh, we can, say that 99%, this is actually 1 minus epsilon sub beta that goes to 0 as, as beta increases, but, so, but, but let's just say 
99% of the faces are going to be just flat at height zero. And, and the famous corollary of this was that there are uh, non-translational invariant uh, Gibbs measures as we, and this was the topic of Lawrence's talk yesterday. Um, okay, so this is, uh, yeah, this is, this is one slide that I wanted to include uh, after this came up yesterday. Uh, we, we already discussed this also in the open problem session. The situation for easing, I thought it's, it's befitting to include this little uh, piece from below. This comes from uh, the, the Dombe and Leibovitz uh, phase transitions and critical phenomena, volume 10. So it's in 1986, Abraham wrote that, that even though it's been you know, 13 years since, uh, since there was numerical <laughs> evidence for the roughening transition, still there is no rigorous proof. This is 1986. And the situation is the same. Um, okay. That there is a, a phase where you <laughs> joke. Uh, the, <coughs> that there's no that you cannot there's no rigorous proof that you can identify a temperature in between T C and T R where, where there is a, a rough phase. Um, okay, and, and this is a and when you try actually when when, when you try to, to work with the easing model, um, anything anything that approaches the the the, the rough region, every any any time even though we are, we will be concerned, will be concerned with this part of the of the phase where everything is supposed to be rigid, but but generally speaking, even when you are looking at this part of the space, this scary bit can still be uh, challenging because depending on, well, we'll get to this a little later. Depending on the tilt of your of your of your region, you may you may expect to have a behavior that's like that even in this phase. Okay, um, so some, some related results. Um, I, I want to mention that, that, and we'll see this uh, towards the very end of the talk, Dobushin's uh, ingenious argument was, was very robust and, uh, and lent itself to applications in, in, in other models. Um, sometimes um, the, the surrounding details are different. Uh, in, in Jeffrey's book, uh, you'll see a kind of a, a different way to do the cluster expansion if you work with the random cluster model. But the combinatorics of these walls and ceilings is, is uh, in Dubushin's uh, uh, trick on, on how to kind of flatten this 3D picture into a two-dimensional one is, is more or less the same. Um, we'll need to come up, we, we needed to come up with, uh, with a way to modify it to, get, to answer some of the of the delicate questions that we'll try that we're trying to answer here, um, and there's still a long way to go. Um, I won't say much in the talk about tilted interfaces. This also came up yesterday, um, and yeah, um, I'll just uh, say something about it at the very end. What we are interested in is the following question. That that's going to be uh, the the main uh, the main focus. So we already know from the Bushin that the interface is going to be rigid if beta is bigger than beta critical. And now the question is, what happens if you put a hard wall below the interface? So you select some height h, let's say h0 or h1 or h2, and then at, level, at depth h below 0, you put a flat wall and you forbid the interface from dipping below that level. So this sort of question uh, uh, came, th these, th th line, the line of such questions uh, was uh, studied in, in various crystal models in the 80s, starting from, from this paper, that's the first one that I wrote, that I read on, on, on this topic, a very influential paper uh, <coughs> by Brickmont, El Meluki and Jorg in 1986. This is a quote from this paper, and, and, that, and this paper was not just SOS, it's also on, uh, on the integer valued uh, uh, discrete Gaussian model, and th this paper highlights how, in the but 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 for us the the specific case of the SOS is is very relevant because the SOS is a low temperature approximation of 3D easing, and it describes how we'll get to this paper uh, in more detail soon. How placing a hard wall 
creates a competition between entropy and uh, and energy. And I actually didn't put put this in the slide, but but this paper has a, a very nice uh, uh, description where it where it shows that if you had a birthday cake model where you can only build um, layers up and never down, then the effect of, of putting a wall is not felt. So it's the, it's the spikes going downwards that are, go that are going to push your interface to go up. And we'll see, the, I, I have a slide dedicated to the heuristic uh, argument that, that, that's behind this quote and also to, the, uh, to one of the main theorems in that paper coming later on. Um, so let's say this. Uh, so let's say uh, the question that we are interested in formally. We're in the 3D easing model with the Bruchin boundary conditions, classical ones, half minus, half plus, and we are going to look at the conditional measure. So, so in this, in this, this every such easing configuration induces an interface, one interface. So we have an induced measure on interface. So we can think about it like that. Now we can say, OK, let's condition that the interface does not go below height minus h. OK, you can take h to be 0, you can take it to be 1, 2, whatever you want. So this is uh, this mu hat here with a little h. So to be thought of as the conditional measure, given that there's a hard wall at minus h for the interface. OK, and what we can think is that well, if you take this h to be very close to the surface, let's say at height zero, then just like in, in the literature on the, starting from, from that paper of, of Jorg and his collaborators, the interface is going to be propelled and it's going to actually diverge logarithmically. And if you take h to be very large, so meaning that the wall is far, far below, let's say you take it to be as large as, as what you expect the maximum or the minimum, this is symmetric, of the interface, then you don't really feel the effect of, of the wall because the interface is never going to dip that low anyway. So there is going to be a phase transition between H actual, between the wall at H actually propelling the surface and, and the wall doing nothing. And this is, this is the effect that we're trying to understand. So, sorry, just to understand, uh, is this the phase transition that uh uh, Jörg was mentioning yesterday. The layering, and we, we, I'll mention that later. It's not exactly. OK. I have a slide about related uh, results and questions. Um, OK, so this is, the, I, I'm, start, I'm stopping. I will go through kind of uh, the, the history of what we knew about SOS and what, then what we knew about easing. But, th but this is jumping straight to the end. This is the last result that we've uh, posted just a few months ago uh, with uh, Reza, who's here over there. Um, and, and, and this final result, or the last result, is pinpointing one integer, a specific integer, h n star, deterministic, such that if you put the wall at that distance from, from zero, OK, so at distance h n star or, or, or lower, then you're not going to feel the effect of the wall. So 99% of the faces are going to be horizontal at height zero, just like in the Dobrushin result. That's in the box n by n, right? Yeah, box n by n. Mm -hmm. If you, you take the wall to be one integer above it, then you will feel the effect of the repulsion in the sense that if you look at height zero, you have nothing there. Okay, so this is uh, so this is the, the, the uh, and and actually uh, there's a if uh, those of you with keen eyesight will notice that actually there's there's a, a the question of what happens exactly at h n star minus one and the answer is that for most values of n a certain way we can also answer that there is what's n n is the side length of the box yeah so it's like this. So this is n by n, and now we are going to to find 
that that if we put a wall at height at height that is that is h n star about h n star or lower, then the surface is going to be flat here. Whereas if we put it already one integer higher, this is going to uh, to be noticeable in in almost every. Well, can we say phase. that the that there, all the faces are going to be in L one then? Ninety nine percent. That depends on. That depends on where, what you take h to be, right? I mean, if you take it to be exactly one, one so layer, yeah. yeah, then so it should. There, there will be a sequence of. Uh, uh, I can already tell you that this h n is going to be of of height that is log n. Okay, and then you'll have a sequence of phase transitions, and these actually mirror the question of your from yesterday of layering. This is kind of a. Uh, it's an, an, an analogous. There are lots of flavors of, 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 of the same phenomena. So you, you picked the numbers 0.99 and 0.01 just as exemplars. But if you took a generic def definition of sort of anti-roughening as let's say that the height of the midpoint is tight, yeah. would, would the same hold? Or is this very specific to this particular type of definition of roughening? Hmm. OK, so first I, I took a 0.99 and 0.01. What you can actually write is like e to the minus beta or e to the minus uh, something like that. Okay, so so it's a it's a fraction that decays exponentially fast in beta. But you're working specifically on the number of phases. You have you have to put something like that okay. because of local thermal fluctuations. We call it the phase transition. It's basically, the, it's the finite it's the finite volume uh, effect because you look at the finite n. I look at finite n. Yeah. Okay, so um, if there are no if there are no questions on if there are no further questions on this slide, then I can. Uh, oh, I didn't understand the answer to the question. What's going to happen if we just go one step up? Will just go surface up one step, or is that, is that a question? Yeah, yeah, I didn't understand your answer to the question. So to Rick's question, yeah. oh well, the answer is if you put the that. Uh, if you, for, it depends on where you place the wall. There will be a sequence it of of. Oh, it will be a tight one. Ninety-nine percent. Yeah. Okay. And then, and then you can go on. If you put it at height zero, it will be at height h n star. Okay, but uh, but we didn't put that in the paper. I mean, this. <laughs> I mean, there, there, are, there are some technical difficulties in showing the layering. OK. Um, so for related work um, on entropic repulsion in easing, I want to mention uh, a few papers. Um, in this one, um, I mean, this, th th this one uses kind of, th th these are two dimensional uh, uh, Papers in two dimensions that are trying to understand, let's say, the first one, the difference between being in a half space and conditioning on on the interface being uh, being positive. Um, this one is about uh, convergence of, of of the easing or more generally pots above a hard wall to a uh, to Brownian excursion, and I think and we're going to hear a lot more, I think, about these in the next talk by Ivan, who's smiling over here. Uh, <laughs> I'm, on, I'm also going to mention uh, some, uh, some other related works in, in D equals 2 when we discuss SOS. Um, in dimension 2 plus 1, if you're looking at crystal models, there's this paper that I already addressed and I'm going to elaborate on soon. There are extensions of, of, of these results to uh, these grad phi models. I didn't really define them. I will, I will soon. And there are also results on the discrete GFF for entropic repulsion. Um, I think what's, what one can take out of these results is that when you have entropic, entropic repulsion, for instance, in the DGFF in, in uh, 2 plus 1 dimensions, you expect to see that, th that if you put, let's say, a hard floor at 0, the interface is going to rise. And you're going to get a DGFF raised to a different level. Okay, So, so, so the, the goal would be 
uh, to show that the effect of the repulsion is going to propel the surface into essentially the same law only shifted. Um, okay, we are still far from there, but, uh, but then uh, there, there were uh, many results also for easing. Um, and uh, for instance, there are, I mean, you could, you could uh, at least make out, uh, in some of them, are, uh, some of them are, are in the half space, for instance, showing this one just shows you can draw for me the fact that there's delocalization, for instance, the, that the interface will be propelled to some height. Uh, that, that diverges with the, with the side length is at, 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 if you put the wall at height zero. Um, and um, there is this connection that we already mentioned to Jörg's question from yesterday about wetting and layer. This is exactly. Um, and uh, one, one thing that I should say is that I think that despite the, the vast uh, literature on the topic, I, um, we, we have not yet seen a paper where, where, which establishes um, the exact, I, I think even, even the asymptotics of one of these uh, phase transitions. Um, for instance, so we get, we get one integer, but already getting uh, the asymptotics, for instance, for this question, getting the asymptotics of, of the H, which would de delineate this, uh, this phenomenon between everyone at height zero and, and everyone above height zero, uh, seems, it seems like doing something like that would require everything that we had to do in order to get the precise integer. Would it be much harder to look at the entropic repulsion of, say, two interfaces? I, I think so. <laughs> because, yeah, uh, I, I would guess so, but uh, um, I'm kind of a... I'm, I'm already singed by the effects of, of, of multiple curves repelling and pinning each other in SOS, and that was just SOS, so I would be, but yeah. We will get to that soon too. Um, okay, so ab about this HN star that uh, the trick was uh, asking about, and, and I quickly said that it's going to be about log n. Uh, here's how to define it. Uh, in order to define it, let's first look at this quantity. Let's take easing with uh, just classical, classical easing, the, the thermodynamical, uh, 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 the, the, uh, the, the, just the infinite volume limit of, of what happens if you put uh, minus and pluses and let n go to infinity. So I, I write this limit as mu z3, the, the usual Dobrushin measure that we discussed in the context of non translational and invariant Gibbs measures. And uh, I'm looking at the point here, the origin, at height just above this, uh, this uh, pluses, and I'm asking for the probability that it's going to reach a slab at height h. There's a little bit of a, this is tiny, I don't know if you can make it out. This little thing here is asking you to, 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 for, to have the connection be in that slab as opposed to connecting anywhere from below because you have infinitely many possibilities, so this would make it just uh, trivial. But if you are forced to use the kind of in between, the mi to use the minus phase, then this decays exponentially. And uh, what we want, want to define is to, to look at, at the rate that, at which this decays. Sorry, you didn't define the event. The event is that zero is connected to this slab with a chain of pluses in the classical easing model. No but interface. But not higher or? Well, maybe higher. That there is a chain. There is a chain of pluses of plus spins. This is just easing, not not the not the interface. There is a, a, a connected path of plus spins that connects this point to height h, okay. anywhere on this slab. So where is the wall on this picture? There is no wall. This is just the easing model. Connects the origin to this Connects the origin, the origin to this slab. <coughs> but it's well defined. Okay. Uh, now, unlike it's well defined, but by the way, uh, uh, the fact that that this limit exists is non-trivial. Whereas before you put the minus and pluses, you can just use the FKG 
to show your, uh, your uh, super multiplicativity and then and get uh, using Fekete's lemma, you, lemma, you can just get immediately that there is a limit. Here, the effect of this plus and minus changes the picture. And it took us, uh, I mean, this was, this, was a, this was a long, this required some machinery in order to prove the existence of the limit. And in particular, I cannot say, and maybe people in this audience could tell me, if there is a difference between this rate and just the, the usual, uh, compare the usual quantity under the minus phase. So strictly speaking, it could be, it feels like, once you're already at a large distance from, your o from the origin, you are deeply within the minus phase, and then maybe what should dominate is just the, the, the minus phase's rate. So maybe this alpha is actually the well-known decay rate in, in the minus phase, but I don't know how to prove it. Okay. I think it's, it should follow from uh, what uh, Massimo Campanino and John Felice did. Oh, that would be great. So maybe you can explain to me later. <coughs> okay, so we, we proved uh, a submultiplicativity uh, estimate for this one, a submultiplicativity estimate. Um, and, then, um, and then we showed, in, and this is the, our first world on topic, that actually the maximum converges in a box, uh, still no flow, just uh, the, the regular classical Dobushing setting, that if you are, uh, that, it, that the maximum in the box is going to, to look like uh, 2 over alpha times log n. Okay, and the 2 is because you have n squared sites. So essentially it looks like the same as if you took independent uh, geometric random variables or exponential random variables with, with this rate. Okay, and looked at, at the maximum of those. So this would be the maximum of the surface. Now, the critical HN star, this is what I was getting to, to, to kind of mark the onset of entropic repulsion, is going to be the first H, this is a deterministic quantity, this, this alpha H, the first H where, which overshoots log n, log n minus 2 beta. Okay, so, so in particular, this, this shows that HN star, this critical integer, is asymptotically one half of the maximum in the in 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 easing. Mm -hmm. So even though we said in the motivational slide that well obviously if we set the flow below height that is the maximum or the minimum they are the same then you don't feel it. Uh, you need to raise it. You can continue to kind of push the flow up and until you reach half the maximum you still don't reach it. And then you start reaching the effect, feeling the effect. Um, okay, and this is exactly the situation that we saw in, in SOS. Okay, so this brings us so to your the path, SOS. is it directed or can it go back in your picture? Then? This guy. Mm -hmm. uh, so, okay, so uh, here, we're, when we're talking about MN, it's the maximum of the interface. The interface is a collection of faces. So it's like, it, it's, you just put a bunch of faces that, are, that connect by, by, by a point and so on. Okay, so it looks like, it, it looks like but, but they are kind of between pluses and minuses. So actually you should think about it as if you are constructing Lego pieces. But they can kind of uh, create little blobs and then and with overhangs and they can go, uh, they, they morally look like random walks from a rigid space. Okay, you have a rigid... Yeah, but are they forced to go up one step yeah. or can they also do that? They can go down, they can, they can do whatever. Um, just like, I mean, your, the alpha dominating them is a, is a connection, right? So a connection, the path can do anything. Okay, so, um, so this brings us to the solid-on-solid -solid model. Um, what is the solid-on-solid -solid mo mo model? It's a distribution over height functions. We have an n by n box. And now, and this is important, we want the height to be integer valued. And we put zero boundary conditions. Okay, this is like a, 
the, this is going to, to model the interface in, in the Debussing setting. Um, the distribution is going to be such that we are weighting every configuration proportionally to e to the minus beta times the, the summing over nearest neighbors of the vertical discrepancy between these two points, between these two, uh, the values of the function. And, and then these other models that I mentioned would just take instead of, uh, instead of the absolute value of the differences, uh, they, they would take the, the absolute value raised to the power of p. This is grad phi to the p model. And p equals 1 is SOS, p equals 2. It, uh, so Jung in his paper called it the discrete Gaussian. Today you can find it so in, in, in different papers. It has different <coughs> names, sometimes IVGFF. In Eisenman's recent paper from October, he called it Z, ZGF, Z for the integer valued. Uh, this is restricted SOS. Okay, we're going to focus on, on, on the SOS case. Uh, but the, ph the phenomena is, uh, is the same in all of these models in, in terms of entropic repulsion. Um, okay, I have one slide here that shows why this is a, it's kind of obvious uh, to those who haven't seen it, why the SOS model is, is such a valuable uh, approximation of easing. But what the slide is trying to show is just that if you restrict yourself to configurations that don't have overhangs and don't have clouds, bubbles hanging in, the Hamiltonian that you're counting is exactly the same one. Because yeah, so if you start with like with with minuses on the bottom and plus everywhere else, then counting vertical discrepancies between a guy and, 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 and the neighbors is exactly counting the, 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 counting the total number of disagreements in the corresponding easing model. So SOS and easing have, if you, if you wish, exactly the same Hamiltonian, only SOS restricts itself to a subset of the configurations where you don't have these overhangs and bubbles, but those shouldn't really exist in the minus, in the low temperature situation that we're, that we're addressing, so the approximation should be good enough. Um, okay, and and some of the literature. Uh, uh, this is this is a, a we mentioned the roughening uh, transition, uh, and and Tom and Jorg are both here. This is a uh, still still a, a remarkable and mysterious <laughs> uh, proof. It works for SOS and the discrete Gaussian that there's a roughening phase. Um, I think that it's still open to to carry it out to I don't know. Let's say p equals four p equals 10. There's some magic in the middle of that proof. Um, uh, the, um, okay, but, and, and we, are, we are going to uh, consider ourselves with the, with the localized uh, rigid part where beta is big, where everything is supposed to be flat. Um, okay, so now we can get back to the paper that I said that we're going to revisit. This is, uh, this is one of the results in this, uh, in this pioneering paper. They show that if you have the SOS model and you are looking at the SOS model, but now you add a little uh, twist that says that the heights are going to be all non-negative. Okay, so this is exactly like putting this little wall at height zero. And you're asking yourself, what is the typical height? Before you put this wall at height zero, uh, the model is symmetric. The expectation at every point is zero. Okay, you can just invert around, reflect. Uh, so now it turns out that, that, that the model uh, in, under this conditioning uh, gets propelled to, height, to average height that is about log, between two constants over beta times log. And here's the heuristic explanation. Um, suppose that I, that I want to... Uh, raise the model by one. So right now I'm in a situation where everything is roughly at height h minus one and I want to understand the cost of just adding one to each of the heights. So this would correspond to adding this little extra slab. And the extra slab is going to charge me a payment of one along the boundary because I have zero boundary conditions. So now I increased my payment along the four n points on the perimeter. So this is four beta n. Now, what do you gain? 
you gain the ability to put in spikes going downwards. That's why the, the explanation in the, that paper that if you had a wedding cake model with no spikes, with no holes, only things going up, then there would be no entropic repulsion. So you gain the ability to, to now have spikes that go one, one layer lower than they could before. Now such a spike would cost you if you, if you, if you are at level uh, H, then such a spike going all the way down to zero would cost you four beta H. So you have four neighbors. For each one, you're going to, uh, to sustain a beta at worst. Maybe, maybe there's another spike next to it, and it will charge you less. But we're taking the worst case uh, scenario. Uh, and then this means that you gain entropy from putting these. If this is the fraction of points where you are putting these, e to the minus 4 beta n of the, of the places you will allow you to stick in a spike like that, then you should write here the Shannon entropy of this times n squared as, as a positive term in your exponential. Okay? Uh, so we get, so everything is in the, in the exponent. This is the, the cost, this is the uh, gain. You measure these together. Let's ignore the log term in the, in the p log p. Uh, so we get e to the minus 4 beta h times n squared should balance with 4 beta n, meaning that e to the minus 4 beta h should be about 1 over n. OK? And in particular, h should be log n. And if you wanted to, to uh, the actual proof, by the way, uses a period of Sinai of, this, of the lower bound in that paper. And it, but, but if you want to. Uh, to say it even 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 uh, uh, more precisely, this would mean that your h should be one over four beta log n, and of course maybe some flow or some or, from, or some ceiling, something like that. Okay. So now I'm going to uh, put in one slide everything that we know on the SOS model ever since, so, so from 86 until today. Uh, and the, the, we know a little bit more, but this is a summary of, 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 uh, of several papers with uh, Pietro and Fabio and Fabio and Alan. Um, so let's see. First of all, the histogram. 99% of the sites are going to be on one level. Everything is with high probability. So this is SOS model above a flow. And this level is going to be this one, 1 over 4 beta log n. Okay? Only it's either that or that minus 1. And, and, and you can actually say which one it is for most values of n. And let's not say what most means at this point, un unless you really Why force me. This Planck constant sign there? <laughs> this? Uh, because I already had an hn star, and I want you to remember that this is the h that comes from SOS. So it's a different h. Um, uh, because I, there, I'll have a slide right after this one that compares them to see that, they, that, that actually we, we get the same phenomena. Um, okay, now, yeah, there is, a, there is a, a deterministic constant that we attach to every n. If you really care, this is going to be the fractional part of this 1 over 4 beta log n. It comes up in the calculation. Call it lambda n. Okay, it's something. If you take a sequence of boxes such that this lambda n for, the, for those side lengths converges, so it's a, it's a, it's a number between 0 and 1. So, so if you, if you want to make it simpler, just say there exists a sequence of side length that you can take such that the level lines at the top, is, at the top level, second uh, from the top and so on, converge in Hausdorff distance to a scaling limit. OK, so uh, this entire business with the lambda is that, I mean, diff because of, of, of these uh, integer effects of, uh, of the, the fractional part determines the limit, the limit shape. So you need to, uh, but to, so to take a, it's an if and only if. And you can describe the limit explicitly by taking, it will effectively be you take a little wolf shape, you select its radius, in a way that's determined by this fractional part of 1 over 4 beta log n, you raise it, you, you dilate it according to the, 
to the height that you're trying to understand from the top one and so on. And then you translate it everywhere and you get, and you, you get, to, you get a shape where you see your, because you tra translate it everywhere, you see this wolf shape only in the corners. Everywhere else is going to be tangent. So in the corners, you, you get to see the macroscopic scaling limit. And everywhere else, it's just flat. And this is the limit. And finally, uh, we know that, uh, we know some other things that I didn't put on the slide, but, uh, but, but, but notably, along the flat sides of the limit, the, the random fluctuations of the level line from that, from that uh, scaling limit are going to be about n to the one third. So this is a KPZ uh, regime. Okay, so this is what we know for SOS. Okay, now I'm going to give some more details about what we know and, and some open questions on SOS, and then we'll, uh, we'll get back to easing. Uh, but before we do, I want to, to mention what I mentioned to Roman, uh, the comparison between SOS and easing. So uh, because you have domain Markov in, in, in SOS, to say that in SOS you, you start at zero and ask where you're going to end up, it's essentially the same as saying that in SOS you are not allowing the surface to go below some h. So it's, uh, it's essentially the same question. The, 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 the easing case uh, is a little different, but, uh, but in SOS it's the same. So let's, let's compare the two. So in, in SOS, uh, the height uh, is going to be either this h with the bar minus 1 or h bar. And in, in 3D easing, the, our entropic repulsion threshold was, was either this hn star minus 1 or hn. And in both cases, uh, depending on the value of n, you could actually also address whether it's exactly this one or exactly that one, similar to these uh, uh, fractional uh, part effects. And let's compare the value. Here it was 1 over 4 beta log n. And the maximum you can show is exactly 1 over 2 beta log n. Okay, so, so 1 half of the maximum. Should we worry about this alarm? That it's okay, fine. <laughs> okay, just checking. Uh, okay. And, uh, and, and the same applies in, in, in the easing. Now, we cannot, I cannot write to you what exactly HN star is going to be. I have this alpha, this, this limit, uh, that's, uh, but, but, but it's a number. And, and I can show that, that it's exactly uh, going to also characterize the maximum in a way that HN star is, again, one half of the maximum. And finally, this alpha you can show is, is around 4 beta up to some, so it's between a constant uh, below it and some epsilon beta above it. So as beta goes to you know, infinity or as beta becomes larger and larger, you see that your alpha is about 4 beta, which, may, which kind of uh, coincides with these SOS predictions. You get exactly the same, the same values. Okay, so, uh, so this is what, I guess, this is where our results on easing stop, but our results on SOS continue to discuss the level lines and the scaling limit. So I'm going to uh, say what we know about those, what's open, and then if I have time, I'll mention some of the, at least how, how we got to this point in easing. Um, okay, so first uh, I have a slide kind of defining the level lines. The level lines in SOS are what you expect them to be. So you put so if you want to understand the level line at level 10, you put a dual edge if, one, if, one, uh, if you have two neighboring uh, sites and one of them is at height at least 10 and, this, and, the, and the other is at height less than 10. So you get a collection of edges. These close into, into loops because the boundary condition is zero. They have no choice but to close into loops. So you have a, an, a loop ensemble. That's called the level 10 loop ensemble or the 10 level line. Okay? So for each level you have, uh, they will, for instance, if you have a, pi a, a spike like this, then it will have a loop of size 4 for each of the level lines. So, they are, so the different levels are kind of have, have, have edges in common, but each level by itself is just a collection of disjoint loops. And you can ask about its limit. 
So first, you ignore all the thermal fluctuations. So this goes back to your question, uh, Jeffrey. It's the same thing here. You always have up, uh, so constant. This, this is the picture. This is how it looks before you clean it up. You always have these thermal fluctuations. You can actually go up to size log. I don't know why we chose log squared in the paper with Pietro. Just we wanted uh, to be able to not chase constants before the log. So we clean every, everything that's bigger than log squared does not exist except for one loop that actually is going to have a size that is linear up to the critical height. Okay, so from height zero up to the critical height, if you clean the thermal uh, fluctuations, you're left with one loop. This is uh, with high probability. And above this level HN, you have nothing. Okay, uh, just, just the microscopic ones. <coughs> and, and, and the shape th uh, theorem says, well, there is a scaling limit. These, the single loop at every level converges to this, to this wolf shape as I mentioned. So the, the usual wolf shape invariant are under uh, pi over 4 rotation, and you just uh, you dilate it appropriately and then flush it everywhere. And by the way, this operation of kind of flushing it everywhere, this is a way to define the scaling limit. It's also actually how the proof works. <laughs> because uh, what we do, we kind of look, if we can squeeze in uh, this shape, uh, then we can kind of show that the interface is unlikely to kind of uh, to, to draw far away from it. So uh, we use kind of monotonicity and then, okay, that's, that's, uh, that, that's in, in, in this paper that I mentioned. Um, okay, now uh, for the cube root fluctuations, actually the situation is, is, uh, uh, is, is as follows. We can show that along the flat part, al along the, the rounded part, we don't have anything. Should be that the fluctuations are normal. Uh, Senya and uh, Schoenman had a conjecture like that in a paper from 25, 26 years ago, around that time. Uh, we, we just have that it's little o of n, or n to the 1 minus epsilon. Here, it's, it should be it's cube root n, and we show that the maximum deviation is bounded by n to the one third plus epsilon. We actually have nothing from below. Like this is a bound on the, it's, kind of, it's written like it's tight, but, but this is a lower bound on the supremum. So if you actually ask me what is the height exactly at the center, there is no bound right now. But it should be n to the one third. And, uh, and now let me zip through. Uh, some uh, some slides on what we on, on on how we expect this to be in the continuum, because you can also because even that is not well understood. You can you can cook up. I'm going to do this very quickly. You can cook up the following uh, description. You take you take the following model in continuum. You have n Brownian excursions. They lie one on top of the other. Okay, like th so the first one is a, a the, this B n is an excursion, and then you have just a Brownian bridges non. Uh, non-coursing above it. And now you're going to tilt it in a way, let's ignore this one over n here. It's important for me, but uh, I'll say it in a second. Let's look at this term. The ith curve, well, it's all, they are all positive. The ith curve has some area below it. You're going to tilt it by this area in a way that's going to, uh, with a minus sign, so the curve is going to feel uh, that it wants to stay close to height zero. And the higher the curve is, the bigger the, the, bigger the this, this push is. So this Bn is really going to feel a, a, a huge drift towards zero. And, and the first one, B1, just feels 1 over n. And now in this way, there is no n, little n here. It's just a constant, so it doesn't really matter. But for SOS, this n is actually there. The highest level should feel I mean, this e to the minus 4 beta h is 1 over n. This is how much you gain from sticking in the spike. So the area of the, of the highest level gets a, a, a bonus of the area times 1 over n. Or uh, in this way, we, we are looking at, at things below the curve. So it's like the outside of the area gets a penalty of minus 1 over n. It's, it's the same thing. OK, so uh, if you do this calculation, this is a quick back of the envelope calculation that says, look, 
if you have an n to the uh, two thirds by n to the one third rectangle, then a one over n uh, area term times the entire area, which is n, that's nothing. So that's exactly where it begins being nothing. So this, this should give you cube root fluctuations. And in the case n equals 1, just one curve, but with an area term, this converges to Ferrari Spohn. Now, this is a, a, I don't know if Ivan will mention this in the next talk. Th this is a, a fantastic breakthrough that I thought would I would never live to see, actually. Uh, but in, 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 in easing, actually, the, the, the two-dimensional easing in, with critical pre-wetting is going to convert to the same thing. It is, a, again, one of these curves with an area tilt, okay? just one curve. And, and they showed it, uh, Ivan and Senya and Dima um, and, and, and Ot. Okay, so, uh, so the SOS situation is uh, unfortunately similar, but now we have instead of one curve, we have many curves. And actually, we're going to take n to be log n. Log, log of the distance to, logarithmic in the distance to the, like this is between 0 and t, so it should be like log capital T. Okay, so there are some results already showing kind of the tightness of the, of the ensemble as n goes to infinity is non-trivial. We have a paper on this with uh, Dempo and Zaytuni that kind of showed, answered one of these problems to, to, to show that the free boundary condition is the same as zero boundary condition. But, uh, I, but I wanna just mention that Here's, here's one thing that you can, that you can uh, ask. Take this model, okay? And, 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 I, and I'm, I am telling you, this model will have, so, so this is a result by, by uh, Pietro, uh, so this paper, these two papers that I mentioned, Caputo, Joffe, and, and Wachtel. There is a limit for the full ensemble of the lines. Meaning, you know, if you look from the top one and second and so on, for any finite k, it will converge to the, there will be a limiting distribution or in the path spaces of this ensemble. There is no description. Unlike this, uh, for, for instance, this Ferrari Spohn in the n equals 1. So it's open to, to, to describe this as a Markov process, for instance. Okay, so the situation, uh, and the situation in SOS is even graver because our n will, will be a function of the endpoint, the number of curves. Okay, so this is the SOS picture. It is uh, even even for SOS, understanding the top curve is uh, is a challenging open problem. Okay, now uh, how do I have ah, five minutes? Okay, so uh, so in the f I I think I can show you a couple of things that are very quickly uh, that just uh, highlight what we were trying to what uh, what our, our roadmap was for easing. Um, so I will skip, I will skip the, there's a calculation, please don't read it. <laughs> uh, this, this, I, I put two slides with very, very simple Peyer's arguments for SOS. Just one, one Peyer's argument that was used to lower the surface and one that was used to raise the surface. I will tell you kind of what is behind this calculation, but at least, if, so if you're an expert, look at it, and if not, I, I just, just listen to me. The idea <coughs> in, in lowering the surface is to find uh, in SOS is to find, this is now a two-dimensional picture, is to find a level line curve, okay, that separates, let's say, you are a, a 10 here, a 9, and so on, and inside you are 11, 11 or maybe more. Okay, so this is a level line, and we want to kind of decrease it. So what do we do? Well, we, the simple Peyer's argument, let's ignore the fact that the surface is non-negative, we decrease by one everything inside. This is piles. So we gain a beta along the perimeter. And what do we pay? Nothing for a fixed curve. For, uh, and, then, and then comes the, the calculation of the entropy of the curves. The, so a curve of size r, you get a constant to the r, but you gain an e to the minus, uh, you gain an e to the beta r. So there are no curves like that. This is rigidity for SOS without a flow. Super simple. But now you have a floor, this conditioning that it's positive. So that means that this effect of lowering by one can be illegal. Whenever you had, let's say, height zero somewhere inside, 
this minus one made it a minus one outside of your configuration space. Well, that's not a good Peyer's map. So what do we do? Well, it's, this slide is supposed to say that this, this, this would work if you, if you looked at, at, at configurations where in addition you're saying that you're strictly positive inside, everywhere. Okay? So luckily in, in SOS we can say the probability to be strictly positive if you know that you're exactly, let's say, H on the outside, that's like saying that the minimum is less than, it's like you shift everything by h. It's like, it's like saying that the minimum does not drop below minus h. And you have fkg, that's like asking uh, that each, the sign is in the right direction. It's like saying that each of the sides does not drop too low. Okay, so you get in, this is the area term. At every point, you don't have a big enough dip. Okay, so you get something, you see, like, a 1 minus 1 over n at the critical height to the power of the area of the curve. Okay, so this is how, how, how lowering the surface by 1 works for SOS, up to the critical point. Raising, it's even more complicated, but, 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 but raising is just, is just saying, I'm going to raise everything by 1, everything, the entire box by 1. That, that's a payment of of a 4 beta n uh, along the boundary. It's, it appears here, this is in green. And, and the idea is that you're saying, well, when do I want to raise if I have too many sites that are below this hn star? I'm looking at all of these sites that are below hn star, and in each one, I'm going to stick in a random subset of them, I'm going to stick a spike, just like in your paper, stick a spike going all, all the way down to zero. The choice of a subset of these sites, of where to stick in this, the spike, you see sum over a subset, and then P is like the probability of the, the, the payoff in sticking a spike. This translates, this is just the binomial theorem, into a 1 plus P, so times the, the, the number of sites where you chose it from. So it's again an area term. Again, just like we had before. So, so this is kind of the, the in a nutshell, how to raise and how to lower in SOS. And, uh, and, and this slide in easing sort of says that everything goes wrong. Uh, we don't know what, when we started, there is no notion of just sticking a spike. We don't know what the actual thing should be that, re that achieves like the, max, the, the large deviation maximum. Once we do, it's going to be random. So we can't really stick it in. And even if we could, they would kind of clash with one another. And the cluster expansion around them would kill us. Uh, and then there's no domain Markov property, which we used. So, uh, so there was a sequence of four papers. Um, and I think, OK, I will, I, will, I will skip those. I will just say that uh, uh, I will show a couple of pictures. This is the... the, the in answer to your question, what, what kind of this walk looks like. It does go kind of sideways and down, but we, we do need like a CLT and law, and, and law of large numbers for, for, for it. Um, uh, we don't have domain Markov, so we had to come up with a version of domain Markov around level lines that are nice enough, that have a, 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 a bounded isoparametric dimension. Skipping, skipping, skipping. Uh, and yeah. And, and, and to the open problems. I don't know about this, uh, whether this alpha is different from, from this other rate. Maybe we, uh, Ivan will tell me later. Um, getting the scaling limit of the level lines in, in easing, that's the next step. Uh, getting the, uh, the cube root fluctuations of the level lines, just like they are in SOS. And finally, here. Uh, here we have nothing. Whenever you tilt. Okay, that's it. Thank you very much. <laughs>